I can't leave the house without my Glock and my stick. Yeah, we get niggas whack for talking shit. Don't put me in your yeah. mission. I just spent like 20 on the op. I should have bought a yeah. What's up, YouTube? If you're new here, my name is Danny James. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create these crazy face swap effects that I've seen in a couple of music videos lately. And we're going to do this on After Effects, but you're going to start on Premiere as usual. As always, give this video a like if you do end up genuinely enjoying it and subscribe if you're watching me for the first time so that you never miss out on my content. Before I start the video, kindly feel free to check out my website at dannyjames.co if you're looking for editing packs, LUTs and a bunch of cool stuff. Now let's jump into it. Real quick, I just wanted to show you the origin for this idea. Uh, one of our subscribers, shout out to Shot by Mick for sending this idea earlier this year and it was a clip by Northside the director. The music video is Pedro by Lal Cartel. So you can see he does most of these face changing animations for his music videos. If you are able to take some time and go to his profile on IG, you'll see most of that style. So I'll just show you how to do it from the knowledge that I've acquired so far. First off, you want to find a part of your clip where you can, you're only seeing the faces somewhere like here. Okay, I'll just make a cut. So we have this subsection right here. And then we also have this subsection right here again, uh, where the character is directly looking at the camera. So that's what you want to look out for. So we're going to try onto this clip right here. I will duplicate it first and then right click and then replace it with an After Effects composition. Okay, once we are in After Effects and our clip is within this comp, we just need to get the resources that we need to create these face swaps. I'll start by showing you the images that I was able to compile first, just so that you can get a glimpse of the ideas that I have in mind. So these are all variations that you can use to swap on the faces and the possibilities are endless. So how you find them, just go to your browser such lexica.art we also have a second option which is the merge.space m-a-g-e dot space i will also link this on the description box so that you can easily access it on lexica you can type anything like cartoon face okay uh, doesn't really give us what you want but you want to get something that looks like this maybe or something like this just some faces that you can use and then the advantage of lexica.art is that it also works like Pinterest. You can search the image itself. That way it can bring you other variations of the same, uh, which you can use for these face swaps. You can search using an image that you upload from your computer. So, so I'll grab this photo right here that I had downloaded. And then you should see the variations that it that it suggests okay you have many possibilities with these you can download as many as you can and see what works best just search other subjects and then you should be able to get something good and once you're able to find an image that you like let's say it's this one right here just click here to download it it also has other variations within the same box okay like this one is also good i'll just download it here so you can keep on searching different queries you can also write breaking bad or any other thing that you can think of that can give you some faces that you can swap with uh, on this other website which is the merge.space you just need to go and click explore first and then you can go under characters and you can also give it the same search queries that we just talked about i can try zombie zombie faces We have some things that you can also think of and incorporate. Uh, like this looks good. I could click on it and download it. Okay. And then you can just keep on advancing your search and trying different possibilities. On Lexica, I think I did this. I searched Call of Duty. You can also try searching Fortnite. Just see the faces that you can get. And you can add faces on the query. That way it's a bit more specific and just keep on looking for images that are looking towards the camera and the face is kind of isolated. So we'll go back to our After Effects and I'll import the images that I already had plus the ones that we've added right now. So here's our folder that has all the images. 
I'll bring these four here. I'll import them into After Effects. Start by checking your footage first. So just go to Windows and ensure Tracker is enabled. And then you should see it on your right hand side. And then click on Track Motion. We're going to track one specific body part or just any part of the of the subject that has a good contrast. I usually put it on the eye and then we track it going forward. You can let it analyze forward by clicking that play button. And then once it's done doing the tracking, just scroll through it to see if those track points have been made. Once you've confirmed that, right click here and create a new null object and then go to your trackers tab and then click on edit target and then make sure the null object is selected hit ok and then click on apply then hit ok so this tracking information has been sent to the null object now you can come back to this clip and delete the motion trackers manually like that let's rename this layer tracking info now we can begin bringing in our images so i'll give it about two frames then we can start with the first image make sure it starts here and then let it run for three frames and then Control shift d you can delete the rest and what you want to do you want to scale up your image once it's evenly scaled you can grab your pen tool. Let's isolate this image and let's go around the skull and the face. Uh, it doesn't need to be a perfect mask. And then I'll go around the neck area, just create uh, some simple points that you can always come back and edit in the later stages. And then I'll just go back to the first point. Okay, once you've done the mask, just go back to your selection tool, hit M twice in case you can't see that mask, and then increase the feathering options ever so slightly. Okay, and then rename this layer face one. And then let's re-enable every other layer so that you can see it. Now we're just going to try to align it to the face of the character. I'll hit S while highlighted on this layer. Hold Shift, hit R so that you also have rotation. Also hold Shift and hit T. So that way you have scaling, rotation and opacity. And then you can scale the image down. You can reduce the opacity ever slightly as you're trying to fix it and position it on the subject's head keep scaling it down and making sure uh, it fits well you're just trying to compose it well on the scene i think so far it looks okay i'll just rotate it a bit and then i will increase the opacity put it back to 100 but i actually recommend leaving the opacity at around 90 that it's not too harsh yeah just something that i noticed you can always hit m come back to your mask once everything is set up make sure you are on the selection tool and you can highlight on these points and try to maybe fuse them into the scene a little bit better making sure they blend seamlessly with the with the subject so that's what i'm just doing that looks good so it should start like this and then swap to a face and then another face should come in. Now what you just need to do is to link it to the parent which is the tracking info that way it stays on the subject. Now we'll just do the same process with like three other images uh, to complete this look. So I've brought in the second image, three frames and then I will cut any excess of that then we're going to do the same process hit s hold shift hit r and t i'll now switch to my pen tool and mask around the subject
okay we are, we are done selecting the second one now we just need to move it around a bit more and then scale it down okay i've scaled it down proportionally i think it's in a good area don't try to do too much with it uh, we're just trying to get the point across not to be perfect as i showed you try reducing the opacity just from trial and error put the opacity at around 90. i'll try to scale it into perspective i think around 19 was good 19 is still a bit too high just try to fit it on the face well and try to scroll from the first one okay this looks okay so once it's like that as i showed you try reducing the opacity put it to 90 and then just link it to the tracking info and then i will rename this layer face number two and i'll keep on doing this with the next two faces Now, once you have everything set up like this, you only have one more thing to do. I'll just create a new adjustment layer and then make sure that adjustment layer stays above everything else. And then this adjustment layer should begin one frame before the first face and it should end one frame after the last face. So Control Shift D at the end, delete it. On your adjustment layer, go to your effects and look for a shake. You just want something that will create movement as these faces swap so i'll use the red giant universe camera shake you can use the sapphire shake you can use every other shake extension that you might have and then i'll just increase the frequency of this shake at around two the universe shake is kind of strong you can see it already has that jittery feeling i'll reduce the frequency to 2.4 it was at 3.1 let's see what it looks like okay that's a bit more low-key i'll still need to reduce it let's leave it at two yeah and then the last thing you want to add on this adjustment layer is a brightness and contrast effect just add it on that adjustment layer on the brightness hold alt while clicking on this stopwatch so that you can add a wiggle expression just type in wiggle you can put 30 and then 100 uh, the first digit is the frequency and then the second digit will be the values within which this brightness will flicker in between so it will flicker 30 times between 0 and 100 in terms of brightness so now it should look like this so you've already added some flash effects using the wiggle expression so this is a strong animation if you want the flickering to be a bit less just reduce the first value maybe we can put it at 10 yeah it's also good you just need something to add that jitter effect and in those few steps you already have this crazy face swap effect we will save this project and then render it in adobe premiere and then play it back here's our small animation within this area now we'll just play it from the top and see what it looks like Bougie bitch, I told her catch these bows and then I buy her inches We get niggas whack for talking shit, don't put me in your mission I just spent like 20 on the op, I should've bought a pendant Buy her inches We get niggas whack for talking shit, don't put me in your mission I just spent like 20 on the op, I should've bought a pendant Something else worth mentioning is that you can always come back to either of the faces that you added Let me disable the adjustment layer for a second Maybe it's this second face that we added you can duplicate it and then right click and pre-compose that duplicate face to pre-comp and then you can click on ok and then i will hide the initial one that is right beneath on this pre-comp right here you can go to your effects and look for bezier warp drag it and drop it on that layer the bezier warp allows you to do something like this just click on that comp make sure to have highlighted on the effect First of all, go to the first frame of that image and then you can adjust the points around just to make the face fit a little bit uh, better to the subject. So you can drag the points around. And now if we try to come back, render that in half, uh, let's look at it. It fits him a bit more compared to the one that is right below us. Okay. 
uh, if you're able to see the difference this is the initial one and then this is the pre-comp that has the bezier warp so i could do this on the first face and even the second one i would actually do the same on uh, this second mask that we also added duplicate it you can't apply this bezier warp on the initial frame which we've added a mask you need to pre-comp it and then add the bezier warp let's hide that layer that is right beneath it go to the first frame zoom in click on the effect on the effect controls and then you can now adjust the image and then it should work like magic that's it for me today i hope you did enjoy that tutorial if for some reason some of the concepts were a bit hard for you just try doing it practically alongside with me uh, most likely they should make sense if you're able to do it once twice it should work uh, going forward give this video a like if you genuinely enjoyed it and subscribe so that you can never miss out on my content my name is danny james see you in the next tutorial peace